Welcome to the Philo Ecosystem Game. This game celebrates ecosystems in all their awesomeness. It showcases the many wonderful, weird, and wacky species that live on our planet Earth. It also deals with some serious threats to ecosystem diversity, like wildfires, oil spills, and climate change. The Philo Ecosystem Game allows players to use their Philo cards to build food chains, create stable ecosystems, sabotage their opponents, and rack up points in the process. The player who has created the most biodiversity, in other words, has the most points, is the winner. This video will show you how to play the Philo Ecosystem game. Part 1. Species Cards! All the different creatures you'll see in this game are called Species Cards. Each Species Card will feature 1. The common name. This is the simple everyday name for the species. 2. The Latin name. This is the scientific name for the species, often used in research. 3. The classification. This is how the organism is categorized scientifically. 4 is the food chain number. This refers to a species position on the food web, where higher numbers feed on lower numbers. 5 is the diet color code, which indicates how the organism gets its food. Yellow is for autotrophs, which make food for themselves from the sun, like plants do. Green is for herbivores, which eat plants. Red is for carnivores, which eat animals. Brown, which is a mixture of red and green, is for omnivores, which can eat both plants and animals. And black is for other, they have alternative methods for getting their energy. Six is a scale number, which represents the relative size of the organisms. Seventh is the terrain. This is where an organism lives. The included terrains here are forest, desert, freshwater, ocean, grassland, tundra, and urban. Eighth is the climate. This is the preferred climate for the organism, which can be either cold, cool, warm, or hot. Nine is the points value. This is the number of points a card is worth. So at the end of the game, whoever has the most points on the playing field is the winner. 10 is the card text. It's important to read when you're playing the game because it tells you what the species can do and a fact about what makes it so cool. 11, the artist info. This is who created the art featured on the card and where you can find more of their awesome work online. 12, legal info. This basically says that anyone can share, copy, and freely distribute the cards so long as the credit goes to the artists and the card images aren't used for commercial purposes. You can pause here to read more about the legal stuff. Part two, building ecosystems. At the start, each player should have a home card facing them. Home cards provide six wildcard areas on the playing field where ecosystems must start. Like the home card, any cards you play during the game will be facing you. This will be important at the end of the game to total your points. The game begins with each player drawing five cards from the pickup pile. On your turn, draw one new card and take up to three of the following actions. Play. You can play species cards from your hand to build ecosystems. Ecosystems must start by playing autotrophs, or any species with a food chain level of one, since they don't obtain their energy by consuming other species. To expand the food chain, play cards that 1. Match at least one climate 2. Match at least one terrain and three are compatible based on diet. For example, herbivores, indicated by green, can eat autotrophs, which are yellow. Carnivores, in red, can eat herbivores. Omnivores, in brown, can eat carnivores, autotrophs, and herbivores, and can be played next to either species. The only caveat is that carnivores and omnivores must also be larger in scale or the same size as the animal it is feeding on, unless otherwise specified in the card text. This game is basically like dominoes, but with more information. Unlike dominoes, however, not all adjacent species cards need to be compatible. As long as there is at least one path back to an autotroph, your ecosystem will survive. Here, moss is put down as the first autotroph next to the home card. 
The earthworm is a herbivore and shares both a warm climate and grassy terrain with the moss. The dragonfly is a carnivore and shares both a warm climate and grassy terrain with the earthworm. Connecting these cards builds a food chain. Keep adding cards throughout the game around played species to expand your ecosystems. Note that you can also build food chains off of species played by your opponent. Move. You can relocate animal species on the playing field according to the value of its move or flight. Animals with the move option can move up, down, left, or right into another compatible and empty spot, while animals with the flight option have the added ability to move diagonally. Drop. If you're in need of new cards, you can toss one card from your hand into the discard pile and pick up three new cards. Pass. You can prematurely end your turn if you can't make any further actions, or just if you feel like it. Note that during your turn, you can make any combinations of these actions. For example, you can play two cards and then pass, or you can drop three cards and pick up nine new ones. Part 3. Event Cards! These are event cards. Each have different effects that can modify the game. Most, but not all, will either hurt or help a species or ecosystem. For example, the Wildfire Event card can eliminate any species on the field that has a grassland or forest terrain. In this ecosystem, Wildfire can be used to eliminate the moss species. Without this autotroph, the moss mite is left without its primary energy source. The affected player has one turn to try and save the isolated species. They can either play a card that can take the place of the autotroph, or they can move the affected species to another compatible spot. Any species that remain unconnected to a food chain at the end of their turn will be discarded. An example of an event card that could help the affected player is a species protection card. This card can immediately counter the effects of the wildfire card, saving the moss species and the ecosystem that it supports. Part 4. Special Rules! Some cards may not fit conventionally into the food chain. For example, the diet color code for zooplankton is black, meaning that they have alternative ways of obtaining energy. These organisms must be played according to the restrictions in the card text. There may also be cards that will fit together in the game based on food chain level, climate, and terrain, but might not actually happen in real life. In these cases, winning the argument is key. For instance, would humans really eat moss mites? I don't think so. The game is also designed so that you can collect cards from decks that other creators have made at philogame.org and play against your opponent using your own custom decks. Players can either split a starter deck of 50 cards or create their own 25 card custom decks. Part 5. Putting it all together! Use what you now know about species and event cards to create food chains, build stable ecosystems, and deal with catastrophic events. When the last card is drawn from the pickup pile, each player will have one more turn before the game officially ends. However, there is an exception to the last turn rule. If, after the last draw, an event card is played or a move is performed that results in an incompatible ecosystem, the other player will always have one more turn with three actions to try and save any affected species or ecosystems. Here, the oil spill event card was played, isolating the opponent's Pacific krill and blue whale species. Although this was the last turn of the game, the opponent is granted one turn to react by moving or playing cards. In the end, players will tally all the points they have left on the playing field. If you have the most points, congratulations, you are the winner! Thanks for watching and enjoy playing the Philo ecosystem game. Game on! Visit philogame.org to check out other awesome cards other creators have made and build your own deck.